and Sister Gail. We give honor to God and thanking Him for this opportunity. Thanking Him for this moment and this life that He's given to us. We do recognize that it is a gift. It's not something that we have earned. It's not something that we deserve. But it's something that God has given us. And we want to take this time to just honor Him for His love and for His grace, for His mercy and for His long suffering. We would like to say that we would give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our Comforter, our 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 Savior, who went to the cross for us to the Holy Spirit who is the comfort and guide for us. God just covered it all, didn't he? Amen. He just made sure that we would have everything we need for this journey that we are on. Amen. Y'all come right over here and make yourself home. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. I'd like to say we I'd like to give honor to Bishop Colburn, uh, come to sit in with us for a little while. And uh, Reverend Clerk, in, in his absence, we know that uh, he's going to be with Brother Scott this, uh, this morning. And the officers, I know Brother Arthur, he's out, he's in Henry County, they got a funeral, so, and he's there serving, so, uh, but we just thank God for each and every one. And uh, different people has different things that they uh, uh, have to do today. So, but we want to keep everyone in our prayers. Yeah. And certainly, I give praise and thank God for my wife, yeah. uh, longtime companion. Yeah. Thank God for her, for the mothers. My big brothers back there on the off, uh, him on the door, they holding it down back there. Amen. And thank God, thank God for all of y'all. Y'all looking good out there. Amen. Reverend McClurk can give you to get up and extend the invitation. And on those occasions when he's not here, I do it. And and usually I just sort of get up behind him and sort of try to echo some of the things that he say to stress the importance of salvation. Amen. There's nothing that is any more important than salvation. Amen. There's never a decision that anyone will have to make in life that will top it. Amen. And so oftentimes people's is reluctant to come to Christ because they feel, they'll say, well, I'm not ready. Uh, they feel that I need to do this or I, I need to do that. But the bottom line is you can't fix yourself. Amen. This is why Christ said, come unto me, whosoever will, let him come. It don't make no difference about your life and how many sins you think you have in your life. He's willing to take you on. Amen. And he is sure mm -hmm. that if you would just trust him, that he can change you. Amen. My God, ain't that what shall be about? Amen. Amen. The scriptures say, who then is a faithful and wise servant whom the Lord has made ruler over his household mm -hmm. to give them meat in due season? He said, blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find him so doing. So do we. The scripture said, when the Lord comes, 
Blessed is those who he find doing. Mm -hmm. What do he mean doing? He means just trusting. Holding on to God's unchanging hand. Mm -hmm. Trying to be fair and loving mm -hmm. towards his fellow man. Mm -hmm. Doing his best to live right. Mm -hmm. Even when it don't look right. Mm -hmm. And the world may not see it as being right. The scripture said man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And it said when the Lord shall return, blessed is him that he find doing. Not according to our standards, our, our road map. According to his standard and his road map. So as I stand here today, and as I open my mouth, God is speaking to you. I don't stand on my own. I stand in his name. I don't have any power of myself. But I know these words have power in his name. And I want to say to you this morning, God is reaching out. He's reaching out to you. And you hear him. And he said, come unto me. All that labor. And the heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. When your soul is restless. Because we live in a restless world. We live in a world that you get tired. A world that you're uneasy. A world that you feel insecure. A world that you feel that it swallowed you up and left you without hope. Christ said, come unto me. All you. And I love the fact that he don't discriminate and he don't leave anybody out. All you that labor and are burdened down. Come to me. And I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Become disciplined under my order. And I'll give you rest. So I say the door of the church is open. And the scripture says, whosoever will, let him come. Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. Yeah. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. I stand at the door and knock. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing I love about the Lord. He, he don't break in on you. Yeah. He honors your privacy Amen. if that's what you want. Mm -hmm. But if you'll open the door, I declare to you, he'll come into your life. Yeah. He'll change your life. Yeah. And you know you need him. You know you want him. Yeah. Just let him in. Yeah. Just let the Lord have his way. I understand the, the fear. I understand the reluctance. I understand the battle. I understand the struggle when God is speaking to your heart and your body and your flesh is saying, don't go. Your spirit is saying one thing and your mind is saying something else. I know the fight. I know the fight because I fought the fight. I know the fight because I still fight the fight. But I know when you give it over to God, that's where you'll find your peace. Amen. So the door is open. At any point in time that you feel the need, find the courage and the strength to rise up and come and acknowledge Christ as your Savior. You'll not be out of order in doing that. This time we're going to ask Bishop Colburn if he'll come, lead us into altar prayer. Amen. 
Everybody stand, if you will. It's about eternal kind master. We come now, God. We thank you now for this moment, God. We thank you for this hour. Yeah. Thank you just for being God. Yeah. We thank you, Lord, for waking us this morning, God, and uh, allowed us, God, to wake up, God, in our right mind, God, yeah. and have uh, the right portion of strength, God. Thank you. thank you, Father, because Father God, that somebody didn't get up, yeah. but we thank you, God, that you allowed our name to be called. Thank you, God, because, Father God, we understand, God, we live in a world, Father God, that is so much going on, God. Father God, there are so many people, Father God, they got so much weighing down on them, God. And, Father God, don't know what to do and don't know how to do it, God. But we come this morning realizing, God, Father, you are a burden barrier. You are heaven alone carrier, God. You can do all things but fail, God. We thank you, God, because, Father God, to get so heavy down here, God. And get rough, God. Sometimes, Father God, living saved, it get hard sometimes, God. Trying to live righteous and righteous, God. And holding, Father God, we see folks doing everything, God, and prospering, God. And sometimes, God, we want to get what we want to surrender. But, Father God, we realize in God. We are bought with a price. We don't belong to ourselves. We belong to you, God. In the midst of what we see, God, have nothing to do with you. In the name of Jesus, God, your people, God, sometimes we struggle, God, and now some here today, God, going through some things, going through one thing and going through another thing, going through this and going through that, and realizing what do I do, God? But Father God, this fight is not ours. This battle don't belong to us. It belongs to you, God. And we realize all we got to do is come to you, God. Bring it to you, God, and leave it at your feet. Come to your altar. Come to your throne, God, and realize you're still a God that specializes in everything. And you can do all things but fail. We realize today sometimes we get weak and sometimes we get tired, God. But then nobody tell us that the road wasn't going to be easy, God. But you told us you would never leave us, nor forsake us. Yeah, yeah. But you'll be with us, God, until the end, God. Yeah. Encourage your people today, God. Bless your people today. Strengthen your people today, God. Some come today realizing I got to die, got to get it right. Yeah. Help us, Father God, even... Those of us, of us, of God, that have fallen short, that have sinned. Forgive us, God. Forgive the thoughts, forgive the deeds, forgive what we're saying, forgive what we've done. But we thank you because you are God, Father God. You not only judge our heart, but you judge the intent of our hearts. You realize, Father God, we weak, but you strong. Lead us up, God, where we fall, dear God. Help us, God. Thank you, God. Bring us back to our consciousness, God. We'll realize, God, we need you, God. Even those that have fallen, God, thank you, God, because we can get back up again. We thank God. Thank you, God. You ain't counting us out. But you counted us on. Realize today, Father God, that we come looking to the hill when coming our help, because all our help comes from you, God. You are a refuge in the presence, in the, in, the, in the time of trouble, God. You are our refuge. We can run to you. You are protector. You are shield, God. Help us to hold on and hold out, God. Help us, God, Father God. You didn't bring us this far to leave us. We thank you, God. Your son died on the cross, God. Paid the price, paid the ransom just for us, God. For a moment right now, God, we can come, we can turn to you. We can realize, we can depend upon you. We ain't got nobody else but you. The world ain't stuckness. The devil's job is still to steal, kill, 
and destroy. He ain't changed it. But help us, God, to realize, God, that you are love. You are eternal life, God. You are a forgiving God. You are long-suffering God. You are patient God. You are God that know how to hold us in all kind of weather. Thank you now, God, for just being here, God. And thank you for those that came today, God, and just heard your voice. Realizing, God, I got to do something better. I got to get it together. But realizing we can't get it together by ourselves. We can't save ourselves. Only you can. We hear you knocking, God. You stand at the door and knock, and you said, Who else is it? Hear my voice. And open the door. I come in. Allow God to come in today. And sit with you. And him with you. He's a God that he hear well. He even hear the whisper. Sometimes you ain't even got to say nothing. Uh, just think up on it. He can even hear your thoughts. He know everything. He all wise God, all knowing God, omnipotent God, omnipresent God. He's standing now waiting on us. Some to come and some to come and get it right. But thank you now, God for your love. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your love, God. Thank you for holding us. Thank you for never leaving us in spite of what we've done and what we have said and what we have thought, God. Thank you. You still ain't gave up on us. And we yet have another chance. So we thank you now, God. For your strength, and we ask you, Father God, to bless the bereaved family and bless those family members that are sick and our family members sick. And bless my sister in the hospital. Bless her, God. Touch her now, Lord. You know how to move, God. You know how to fix it. It ain't over until you say it's over. And we thank you. We lift our hands to you. We give you glory. We give you praise, God. We say hallelujah to your name. We magnify you, God. We worship, we adore you, God. We reverence your name, God. We give you that respect and that honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, all of God people shout together and say, thank God. Amen. 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 Amen.
be back home, Sister Betty. Amen. 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 Take me back to my childhood. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Father in heaven, we come again. And we come, Lord, with thanksgiving in our hearts. Mm -hmm. Thanking you, Heavenly Father, for this opportunity. But we do realize, Lord, it is an opportunity. A time, Heavenly Father, a moment that you have given that we may be able to lift up our voices. Our voices, Heavenly Father, to honor you. Voices, Lord, to praise and to glorify your name. Oh God, what a gift. Oh Heavenly Father, that when we were yet enemies, you sent your son to die for us. And Heavenly Father, we recognize that our position has changed because you gave your gift. Yeah. Oh Lord. Yeah. We pray Heavenly Father that you would forgive us for all of our sins. Yeah. Cleanse us Lord from all of our unrighteousness. Amen. Lord we know that you know more about us than we know about our own selves. Amen. You know more about what we need Lord to, than we know how to ask. Yeah. But Heavenly Father we come weak we come trembling because you are an awesome God we know Heavenly Father to come to appear before you Lord is not a light thing to be taken but we come Heavenly Father humble as we know how we come Heavenly Father shame faced it because you are God. Because you are the creator of all things. Oh God. The earth belongs to you. The fullness thereof. And who are we? That we might come before a great God. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we bow, Lord, we humble ourselves and ask you, Father, to fix us, Lord, where we are broken. Yeah, Lord. Wherever, Lord, relationships have been damaged through things that may have been done, the words that may have been said, God, we call upon you, Lord, to fix yeah, us. Lord. Wherever, Heavenly Father, we may have forgot to say, I'm sorry. I may have trespassed about against our brother or our sister, Lord, and we may have even done it unknown, God. We come, Lord, and we ask you to have mercy and fix us. Oh, Lord God, as we come, we bow, Lord, at the footstep of the throne. And Heavenly Father, we come, Lord, joining in agreement with prayers, Lord, that has already been lifted up in this place. In agreement, Heavenly Father, because we know that we need you. Lord God, because we know we can't make this journey without you. We come, Heavenly Father, calling up on you, Lord, because there are peoples who need healing. Calling upon your name, Lord, because minds need to be regulated. Amen. Calling upon your holy name, God, because families need to be restored. Yeah. Backsliders need to come back to you. Turn their life in. Turn it all over. In again, Lord. God, because they need you. Yeah. And Heavenly Father, as your people, God, as we sit here, Lord, Lord, we all come acknowledging that we need you and can't make it without you. We need you in our homes, Lord. We, we need you in our churches. We need you 
you in our schools and our communities. We need your heavenly Father in our workplaces. Lord, we need you. And we can't make it without you. And heavenly Father, we pray God for that young man. For that young lady. Lord, who are struggling to find a way. We pray, Heavenly Father, for that single mother. Lord God, that don't know how she's going to make ends meet. We pray, Heavenly Father, for that young father, Lord, who don't yet know how to be a father. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those, Lord, who are homeless, God. Has no place to be. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those, all of us, Lord, who sits in some leading position. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us to be everything, God, that you need us to be. Help us, Heavenly Father, to walk right. Help us, Lord, to talk right. Strengthen us where we are weak and build us up, God, where we have been torn down. Prop us, Heavenly Father, on every leading side. God, we're calling up on you because you are our hope and you are our answer. And we claim victory in the name of Jesus. And we count it as already done in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. He's worthy to be praised. God is so worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I give God praise. I thank God for what I have felt here this morning. I know God is in the house. I know he's in the house. Mm -hmm. Certainly we do give thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bishop, for that yeah. altar prayer. Yeah. Yeah. We have to talk to God. Yeah. I want to say this before I begin. I believe in prayer. Yeah. Strongly in prayer, but I want to say this for you, mm -hmm. for you, for me, mm -hmm. that prayer don't change every condition. Amen. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. There are some things in life you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. Sometimes prayer don't change what's coming at you. Mm -hmm. Prayer make you ready when it gets to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Praise God. Praise I just God. feel like that needed to be seen. <laughs> Sometimes we feel like God has let us down because he didn't answer what we thought he should have. <laughs> but he don't change his will. And there are certain things that has to go in a certain direction. Amen. And I go and I often think where Jesus prayed in the garden of Gethsemane. He said, Lord, he said, Father, if it's your will, then let this cup pass for me. But then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. He understood that I've got to humble unto the Father's will. Because there are things that has to go out in a certain way. But the scripture said an angel came and strengthened him. And that's what I want us to know. That if things don't go according to your prayers, that don't mean that God ain't able to take care of you. Oh my God. Amen. I wouldn't even going that way. I just count that as a bonus. 
The scripture reading comes from the book of Jonah. The first chapter, first verse of Jonah. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarsha, from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tasha. So he paid the fare and went down in to it to go with them unto Tasha from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was likened to be broken. Mm -hmm. and then the marinas were afraid, and they cried every man unto his God, cast it forth the wire where were in the ships into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the side of the ship, and he was laying and was fast asleep. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his divine word. I want to use for you a subject. Before I tell you what I'm going to use for a subject, I I want to say that I've been sort of looking at this scripture story of Jonah, just, I can't get it out of my mind. And as I began to read and study, and, and I was thinking, Lord, maybe this is the way you want me to go. Because a preacher can tell you sometimes it's hard to know which way to go. Pray and you seek God's guidance. And oftentimes you think you're going one way, and then all of a sudden God said, Well, I need you to go this way. I come to find out that God is not confused about what He wants. Sometimes God will challenge us. And God wants to know can you stop? And can you change the micromanage? God needs people he can command. God needs people that when he calls them to be in attention, he needs people in attention. So I looked at these scriptures and I thought about first that I would title this scripture, this message, The Elusive Man. Because I thought about how it was that Jonah was trying to elude God. And how it was he was trying to get away. And then I thought, uh, that didn't work. Then I thought about the tosses and turns of Jonah. And I thought on that for a while. And then I began to look at the story and I realized this is not just Jonah's story. This is all of our story. And then I come to the conclusion. To entitle the message, The Twisties and Turns of Life. Because life has so many twists and so many turns. And 
I thought about how it is that oftentimes that, that Jonah is not so much different mm -hmm. than all of us. Amen. That at some point in our lives we, we all try to run. Mm -hmm. At some point in our lives we all will hide. Yes, at some point in our lives we all try to get away. Well. I thought about Something I have shared several times, and I and I found that it, it, it needs to be shared again. Mm -hmm. Because so often time we feel that we must put on a certain persona. Right. So often time we feel that we must uh, present ourselves in a certain way to the world as if everything is intact. We present ourselves as if we have crossed every T and dotted every I. Amen. And other people's looking on and say, I wish I could be like him. All the time we are broken ourselves and hurting. All the time we ourselves are running and, and hiding. Our motives sometimes are we're doing things where we look good. But at our hearts, we are not right. Amen. I thought about as a young Christian man at about 23 years old, and I shared this story before. I went to see this man that he was sick. I didn't go to see him because I loved him. I went to see him because I was backsliding. Oh, my God. Sometimes when you're out of order, you'll do certain things to try to cover your own sin. Sometimes when you're out of order, you will do things to try to feel good about yourself. I didn't have nothing against the man, but I needed to feel good about my own self. And he just happened to be handy. And the thing, what I'm saying is a lot of time, our life is not right. Amen. And you may look at me funny and you say, Reverend God, you. But I can say you too. <laughs> because you see, you're really not going to get anywhere in life until you become clean. Amen. And become honest about who you are. You can put on all you want to. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I the content, it ain't going to work. Amen. You can't fool God. Amen. You cannot hide from God. Amen. You cannot elude God. Amen. And when I looked at the message, and I looked at the scripture where it says, now the word of the Lord came unto John, the son of Amittai. I don't know why. Assume that Jonah was a good man. For some reason, God saw fit to make him a prophet. Because you see, you know, it ain't just because people are bad that they do bad things. Sometimes we just have personal issues that we that messes us up. Jonah, the word of God came to Jonah. I don't know how the word came to Jonah. I don't know where God whispered down into his heart. I don't know where one day Jonah was looking at something and God spoke to him out of the cloud. I don't know whether or not Jonah was one day reading the book and he heard God's voice speak to him. But I know the word of God came to Jonah. I know it came to Jonah because the Bible says it came. And what the word said to Jonah. It says, Arise, Jonah, and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for the wickedness has come up before me. Jonah didn't own and know that the Lord was speaking to him. He knew what the Lord wanted him to do. So often time, God speak, and we know what God wants us to do. Amen. Jonah knew 
exactly what the Lord wanted him to do. And not only did he know what he wanted him to, want him to do, but he knew why he wanted him to do it. He knew he was supposed to go. Come on, come on, come on. Go to Nineveh. Yes, Cry out against the city. Because their sins have rose up Amen. before me. Amen. And when I looked at that scripture, it reminded me that sin has to be paid for. Amen. It reminded me that God is long-suffering and God can tolerate a whole lot. But God will not tolerate sin forever. Amen. That at some point or another, our sin rises up before God. And God has to deal with them. Amen. And many of them had come to that point to where God has said, they have become so wicked, they become so violent, that I've got to deal with many of them. He called Jonah mm -hmm. to go and Tell the message. But the scripture said Jonah rose. He rose and he went down to the docks of Joppa. He went in and he got him a ticket. He got on the ship and off he went. I looked at that and I thought about how it was that. If you're looking from a distance, it looks like Jonah is following God's command. But when I look closer, I realize Jonah was on the wrong ship. Yeah. All right. All right. Jonah wasn't heading to Nineveh. Jonah was heading to Tasha. Yeah. And then I thought Jonah must have made a mistake because that ain't what God told him. Yeah. And then I realized he didn't get on that ship by accident. He got on that ship Trying to get away from God because you see, Jonah had issues with the Ninevites. He had issues with people. He don't like them. You don't like them. And he know God is a merciful God. He know God is a forgiving God. And Jonah don't really want to tell them what God said because he's afraid they might. Change. Come on. Come on. Jonah have personal issues. Oh my God. Go ahead and preach, God. <laughs> Jonah has personal issues. It's the personal issues that Jonah got with other people that is stopping him from doing what God wants him to do. You see, Jonah got a whole lot of brothers and sisters. Oh my God, that got personal issues. And the personal issues say, I'm not going to need it. I'm going to Tasha. I don't want to deal with them peoples. I just soon for them to go to hell. Any Jonas in the house? Because you see, we love the message when it's focused on the preacher. But what about when the message focus on me? What about Miss Jonah? Oh my God. A brother Jonah. Jonah's aggro what you want. Jonah's jumping on all kinds of folk. Go and have a word but need Go and have a word but where God told him to go. Jonah is trying to get away from God. He's trying to get away from God. He know what God said. He know where he's supposed to go. But he don't want to do it. Jonah's got some personal issues. But Jonah read God right. Because God is a mercy for God. He read him right because God is a a long-suffering God. Yeah. He read God right because God is a God who will give grace. Yeah. And it didn't matter how dark Nineveh's sin was, God would still
still extend them a certain period of grace. And Jonah knew that if he preached that message, that may be what happened. But Jonah went and now he goes into the ship that is going to Tasha. And the Bible says he goes to sleep. Jonah not only turned his back on God and walked around his responsibility, he became comfortable in it. Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying, church? Amen. Sometimes we can turn our backs on God and we can walk away from him so long we can become comfortable in right away from God. Amen. There are people that does it all the time. Walk away from God and become comfortable just living a life that do not Obey the word of God. Amen. But the Bible said, but the Lord sent out a great wind in the sea and a mighty temperance. God sent a storm after Jonah. Amen. And sometimes we wonder why we have so many storms in our lives. And it lets me know right here that disobedience Amen. will cause storms in your life. Storm that had rose up in Jonah's life. But listen to what I'm saying. Jonah wasn't on the boat by himself. He was on the boat with other people. Amen. And the storm that he caused to come into his life, come into the lives of other people. Yeah. See, lots of times the storm that we bring in our lives through our disobedience, through our hard-headed, through our stiff neck, and lots of times when we bring storms in our lives, we bring that storms in other people's lives. Amen. Other people are being tossed and turned sometimes because I didn't do right. Amen. Brought storms Amen. Amen. into the lives. And the Bible says the marina was afraid and they began to cast off their word. They began to cast things off of the ship, trying to lighten the load, mm -hmm. trying to fix the problem. Yeah. But Jonah was the problem yeah. and he was fast asleep. Mm -hmm. The marina said, Call upon every man. He said, call upon your God. Amen. Whatever God you believe in, whatever you've been praying to, the marina said, pray to your God. Amen. Because the marina now is afraid, and they don't know what to do. And they are looking for answers. Amen. They are looking for answers because they are in a world of trouble, and they don't know how to get out of it. Amen. But they wake up Jonah and tell him, wake up, old sleeper. Call upon your God. And whenever they talked to Jonah, they found out that the reason why the storm was on the river, yeah. on the lake, mm -hmm. it was because Jonah mm -hmm. was the cause of the problem. Mm -hmm. And Jonah told them that all this way to solve the problem mm -hmm. is throw me overboard. Amen. Oh, my God. Amen. When I looked at my life, mm -hmm. I realized, Brother Junior, mm -hmm. there was some things had to go overboard yeah. because it was going to cause me to sink. If I didn't change the way I would live. Oh, I tried to work it out. Amen. I tried to throw off a few things thinking it might lighten the load. <laughs> but it didn't lighten the load. Amen. The storm kept on raging. Amen. And the wind kept on blowing. Amen. And I finally had to throw the old man overboard. Amen. Oh, my God. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. Some of you are running from God and the only way your storm is going to stop. Yeah. You will have to throw yourself overboard. Yeah. Oh, bless his holy name. Yeah. And they rolled and they tried every way they could to bring it under control. But I'm here to tell you, you can't fix the problem until you deal with the problem. Yeah. If Joe has a problem, it don't make no difference what else you throw over. Lord, it's not going to solve your problem. And if you are the problem, Lots of us the problem. Yeah. Put it on everybody else. Yeah. yeah, they made me sing. Yeah, they made me do that. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> you throw everybody else overboard. Yeah. Once you throw yourself overboard. Y'all yeah. think I'm being mean? No. I may be a little bit. Yeah. But it's the truth. Yeah. Comes out of me. Then I can't help that. <laughs> the men tried. They tried. And they prayed to God. And said, Lord, don't, we don't want the 
give some blood to this man to be on our hand. The prayer, their prayers did not change the situation. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Their prayers did not change the situation. Amen. Their prayers did not cause the storm to stop. There wasn't one thing going to fix the storm, and that's is throw Jonah overboard. And when they throw him overboard, the scripture said the wind ceased. I'm almost done. But everybody was better because they throw Jonah overboard. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. Your life ain't gonna get no better until you throw him overboard. Yeah. You gotta get rid of Jonah. Yeah. You see, let me show you something. The marinas were better. They was better because not only was they was they was they all looking to different gods, but now they are looking to the God of help. Yeah. And they're making vows to God, and they're making vows to say that they're gonna change the way they're living. The marinas was better. And not only was the marinas better, but Jonah was better. Because Jonah prayed and he saw God as God had, as they had thrown him over. And as he was swallowed up by a great fish, Jonah said, I, I prayed from the belly of hell. Mm -hmm. Jonah prayed like he had never prayed before. Sometimes prayer will change things. Sometimes prayer will get you out of a tough game. Jonah prayed to God, and God made the whale spit him up. Spit him up on the bank. Oh, my God. And the thing that he fought so hard not to do, he found himself doing. And what am I trying to say? You can fight all you want to. When God gets ready, you're going to have to move. When God gets ready, he ain't going to leave you no choice. You're going to have to move. Amen. And the Bible tells us that the fish spit him up. And as he spit him up, Jonah began to go through Nineveh and preach and say, 40 days. Y'all got 40 days before God. Come and destroy this city. And the Bible said the Ninevites, they went down in sackcloth and ash. And they repented of their sin. And God turned his captivity away from them. Amen. You see, not only was everybody on the ship better, the Nineveh was better. Amen. They were better because they hear the message of God. And what we have to understand, that a lot of people have not even heard what they need to hear to change. Amen. And so oftentimes, we are criticizing people because they have not changed. If you told them what they need to hear, and when Jonah finally got on board to do what it was God needed him to do, then the lives of people changed. And I think for sure that whenever we get on board and do what it is that we're supposed to do, I think people's lives will change. Because I think that's what the word of God says when he said, you are the light of the world. You're the one that shows who God is. God has to see us. See, see, people has to see God in us. And listen to this. And when the people's changed, Jonah was bad. Sometimes, sometimes, you'll find that. God is able to change people through people who are not all that they all say. Oh my God. Ooh, that's something like that. Because so often time we say I'm not ready. We say I'm not this and I'm not that and I don't have this and I don't have that. Jonah was still mad. Because God saved the nitty. He was still mad. He still had his anger. But still, God got the work that he was supposed to get done out of him. So what am I trying to say to us? I'm saying that we all have flaws. 
I'm saying that we all have shortcomings. Yeah. But you can't wait to everything get perfect to do what you need right. to do. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to do it and you got to do it now. Yeah. You got to move and you got to move now because life has so many yeah. tosses and turns. Yeah. One day you're up, the next day you're down. Yeah. One day things seem to be smooth and going on right the next day you don't know what's going on. Yeah. Life has many tosses and turning and Jonah's life was up and down it was in and out mm -hmm. but when it was all set and down yeah. through the discipline of God he yeah. done what it was he was supposed to do yeah. and the outcome was a marvelous outcome mm -hmm. because people's lives would change yeah. Jesus said if any man will come after me mm -hmm. let him deny himself yeah. and take up his cross mm -hmm. and follow me and Jesus wants us to know that the cross that he's talking about for us to take up is taking responsibility for one another. Yeah. The Jesus said there is a new commandment I leave unto you. That is you love one another. Yeah. I have loved you. Yeah, Greater love has no man. A man will lay down his life for his friends. Man. What Christ showed us. Yeah. He said, I'll give whatever it takes to save you. Yeah. And what it took for him to save us yeah. was death on the cross. Amen. And they buried him, but he rose. Amen. And then this is what he says. I get ready to go to my seat. He says, as I, overcome, as I have risen, you shall rise also. Amen. This world is not going to be able to afford you a home forever. Life is short. Amen. And I'm going to say this. I think about it because so often time, if you're listening to people, they're looking for blessings. Amen. Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me. There ain't nothing wrong with blessings, but yes, but the problem is the loss of our blessings mm -hmm. that we're looking for is world stationed there. Y'all hear that? Amen. We're asking God for fix the, to fix things in the world that is going to be temporary anyway. <laughs> and so oftentimes we're asking God to fix temporary things and never even ask him to fix our souls for eternity. Amen. Amen. Eternity. That's what God's promise. Oh my God. I started on something else. But I would not go there. I'll be here all day. Every man was battered when they casted Jonah off. Lots of us got Jonas in our lives that's not living in us that need to be casted out. This is why a lot of times you can't, oh my God, this is why a lot of times you can't get straightened out. You're hanging around people that can't, that's going to call you to see. Sometimes you have to throw away, I'm not saying forget people, that, don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah. I'm saying there are some people in your life that is yeah. sinking you. Yeah. And you ain't going to float until you separate yourself from them. Yeah. That's just a fact. Yeah. Can I get an amen from somebody yeah. that talking about? Yeah. Recognize who people are in your life. I'm not telling you to hate people. I'm not telling you to be mean to people. I'm just telling you to recognize who it is that is robbing you from the things that you should be. Yeah. Robbing you from your God call ability. You got to recognize that. Yeah. Because until you recognize it, Amen. you ain't going to do nothing about it. Amen. And when you recognize, you have to have the strength to change it. Amen. Oh my God. Amen. I'm going to say this. <laughs> there used to be nothing that made me any more aggravated than somebody get in my car and then chain my tape. <laughs> Y'all remember the eight tracks? Your buddy hop in there and then the first thing you do is pop your eight track out and put his in there. Put him, what he want to hear? You don't have no right to do that. Y'all listen to 
hear what I'm saying. Because what I'm saying, other people will take over your life. Little by little, they will take your life. And if you don't have the courage to say something about it and stop it, they're going to keep it out of you. Hey, I would tell some more stuff, but I'd be getting that man up there. He may not want his bitches talk. I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> Amen. 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 But I'm, I'm speaking something that y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. And I want to say at least, especially to our younger people, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. Amen. Amen. Whether you know it or not, it targets you. Yeah. It targets you. Yeah. It took me a while to learn some sense. Uh, Y'all might learn sense early. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all might learn sense yeah. quicker than I did. Yeah. Because a lot of times you don't learn no sense until you're in a mess you can't get out of it. Yeah. Then you're sitting in a mess with no sense. Yeah. Sitting in the mess and you finally come, well, ah, man, I should have done this or that. And you can't get out. Because that, the world has, we, we are living in a time now where you have a spiritual force in this world that is taking people by storm. Amen. The more the righteous, the righteousness of peoples are dumbed down, the greater evil rises up. Amen. And you see it every day. Yeah. And it's happening. Yeah. And we wonder why the other peoples are peoples are so confused and so mixed up in this day and time. Yeah. People's habits dealing with so many different mental issues. Yeah. You know why? Because the devil has attacked our minds. Yeah. He's attacked our minds. Yeah. Because to see. The scripture said that which is born of God seeing not. The spirit that God puts in you, the devil can't touch. Amen. But he can touch your mind. Amen. You can say, I got my mind made up. And then the devil says, I'll change that. <laughs> and he changes it. Oh, I got so many things I'd like to say. Amen, yeah, but I can't say them now. But I do want to say that life has many tosses and turns. Mm -hmm. It has all kinds of things. But just because you're in a bad place, don't mean you got to stay in a bad place. Yeah. Just because there are things not working for you, that don't, God ain't forgot you. Yeah. God ain't forgot you. That's the main thing. That's the main thing to know that God ain't forgot you. Yeah. And you have to feel your, find your freedom yeah. in what you believe. We live in a world that puts on yeah. a fake world. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Am I right about it? Yeah. Yeah. If I just skip it along, yeah. oh man, it's all fine. Yeah. It ain't fine. Yeah. It ain't good. Yeah. People's are dying. Yeah. People's are committing murder. Any kind of atrocity you can think somebody is doing that yeah. against other people's. And People's close their eyes to it. Mm -hmm. Jonah turned his back to the will of God because he didn't like other peoples. Amen. Peoples are doing it every day. Amen. You can't turn your back on your brothers and sisters Amen. without turning your back on God. Amen. May not be able to hang with them, Amen. but you can't turn your back on them Amen. and make them nothing. Amen. Oh my God. People are making one another nothing. Yeah, Praise God. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I'm done now. <laughs> but I say what I say and I do what I do because I care. Amen. I know this thing is not going to last forever. Amen. And I know it's headed in a bad direction. Yeah. I know what the devil plan is. Yeah. And I know he can only work that plan out when he gets every one of us mm -hmm. operating Amen. the way he wants us to operate. Amen. When he gets us all thinking mm -hmm. the way he wants us to think. Amen. 
then he can take a seat and say, I'm God. Go back and look in the book. Look in Isaiah 14, 12, or maybe 12 and 14. The devil says, I'm going to be God. That's his plan. Amen. But how he going to be God if you love the Lord and God is operating in you? Amen. He can't do it. So what am I saying? You're the one that holds back certain things. You say, well, what difference can I make? You make a lot of difference. Amen. You make a lot of difference. You may not make a difference over on halfway across the world, but you can make a difference in your world. Amen. The world that you live in, you can make a difference there. So I want to say again, the door of the church is open. And the scripture says, whosoever will, let him come. If Christ is speaking to your heart, if you have heard something that connects to you through this message, then you can come to the Lord. Because the bottom line is, I don't think this is a Jonah message. I think this is an I message. I think it's a message that deal with each and every one of us because I don't know about you, but I, I look at the message, I see I see Jonah in me. Amen. I've seen Jonah in me time and time again. I've seen him in my own self. Amen. But you have to come back, repent to the Lord, and allow him to take up that resident to lead, guide your life. Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word, and we thank you, Lord, for this message. Amen. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to see ourselves in your word. Amen. We pray, Heavenly Father, that those who are wrestling, those who are struggling and trying to make up their mind, those, Heavenly Father, who just can not yet find the strength to rise, we pray, Heavenly Father, that somewhere down the line, somewhere, Heavenly Father, that you would speak to their heart and that they might find that strength and say yes, yes to you. And allow you, Heavenly Father, to change their lives, Lord, and that they will see God, that God can be powerful in them. We ask you, Heavenly Father, again, to bless our community and bless every home, Lord, that is represented here. We do pray and ask these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise God.
each and every one of you. We just give God praise. Thank God for this day. I'm, I'm, I'm just grateful. Uh, anyone have birthdays since we last met? No birthdays? Then now let us all stand. Amen. I want to say again to our young men and young men, y'all hang in there. Amen. Y'all hang in there. Cause we, all those old people are fade off to see you. And then when we fade off, there's somebody got to step up and Amen. stand in our place. So, so, and don't just stand there. Do the job. Amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father. Eyes have heard and ears, eyes have seen and ears have heard. Thank you, Lord, for the spirit, the fellowship. Lord, just to be able to mingle and commingle our voices together. We pray, Heavenly Father, that your word have gone forward into the hearts of someone has found this place there. And there he has spoken. Mm -hmm. We know, Heavenly Father, that as you continue to speak, mm -hmm. that it will arouse us mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would continue to strengthen us where we are weak and build us up where we Amen. are torn down. Mm -hmm. We realize, Heavenly Father, that life will sometimes turn us down. Yeah, Lord. Sometimes trouble come and break us. Yeah. But we know, God, that you are God who is able to restore. Yeah. Time and time again, Heavenly Father, that you have brought restoration when we felt like that it was over. Yeah. Oh, God, we praise you. Yeah. Every home that is represented here, Lord, we pray your blessings, Lord, that you would bless that home. Everyone, Heavenly Father, that are weak and feeling like their faith is weakened. We command your strength in them. Oh, Lord. God, we just pray for your mercy, for your grace, that it would dominate over our minds. And Heavenly Father, that we might follow and obey you according to your loving kindness. According to your tender love and your mercy, we claim victory yeah, Lord. in the name of Jesus. Yeah, Lord. And we count it as already done yes, Lord. in the precious name of Jesus. Yeah. Now may the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, a dead, buried, and a risen Savior, yeah, may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, yeah. may it rest, rule, and may it abide with each of us yeah. till we shall meet again. Let us all sing. Oh.